The picture you're about to see is real. It's not been edited or altered in any way. It's presented unashamedly for your consideration. Word of caution though, the mere sight of the dude in the middle of this photo has been known to haunt the dreams of the very strongest. You've been warned, prepare yourself accordingly. Yes, this is a photo of my family. Not realize not everyone enjoys looking at other people's photos. It's said that Churchill once had a staffer ask, have you ever shown you any photos of my kids? To which Churchill responded, no, and I want you to know how grateful I am for that. <laughs> Lee and I are high school sweethearts. Uh, we live in Louisiana with our four awesome kiddos, Ethan, Maddie, Charlie, and Maria, our daughter from Guatemala. Simply put, family is everything. The definition and dynamics of family may change. The importance of family will never change. I realize for some, your family photo may look a lot different than mine, but as First Lady Barbara Bush said, when all the dust settles and the crowds are gone, the things that matter most are faith, family, and friends. So who do you want with you when the dust settles? That's your family. But we all wish our families could be picture perfect all the time, but the reality is life is messy. So when life is messy, what are we to do? Sounds like an opportunity. In the movie, Evan Almighty, Morgan Freeman, who plays God, comes to the distraught wife and says, if someone prays for patience, do you think God just gives them patience? Or does he give them the opportunity to be patient? If someone prays for courage, do you think God gives them courage? Or does he give them the opportunity to be courageous? If someone prays for their family to be closer, do you think God just zaps them with warm, fuzzy feelings, or does he give them the opportunity to love one another? For me, that scene perfectly illustrates life, because every day we all have countless opportunities, small little moments in time to connect with those that matter most. So for the next few moments, I'd love to share a simple little story of family to remind us all of some of those everyday moments. Maddie was born very prematurely, causing her to spend the first few weeks of her life in the neonatal intensive care unit, the NICU as it's sometimes called. The NICU's hectic daily schedule meant that Maddie only slept for about 45 minutes at a time. Now on Maddie's first night home, we gave her a good bath, slathered her in enough baby lotion so she had squirt up like a bar of soap, <laughs> fed her and rocked her to sleep. And for the first time in months, we breathed our daughter was finally home. But Maddie only slept for 45 minutes, that's right. Well, after a few of these 45 minute sleep cycles, we headed for bed. Lee on her side, holding Maddie, me on my side, and big brother who didn't want to mess out on the fun is right in the middle. <laughs> Every 45 minutes, we sprang to our feet to soothe Maddie back to sleep. Lee and I woke the next morning tired, but as we say in the South, it was a good tired because our baby girl was finally home. You know about a good tired. A good tired usually happens after you run a race, tackle a major project, or put in a hard day's work. Family life is full of these good tired moments. Carpools, ball practice, doctor visits, and school projects. We're not wasting time, we're investing time with those that matter most. Every day is full of everyday moments. Those small little seemingly insignificant moments in life that when combined create a meaningful life. Well, friends, I'd love to tell you that Maddie quickly got over her 45-minute sleep cycle, but she continued that for a year and a half. Yeah, Mama and Daddy needed a nap, okay? We tried all the ninja secrets to get Maddie to sleep through the night. Nothing worked, all right? After 18 months of sleepless torture, you know, we no longer shuffled and jumped out of the bed to get Maddie. Uh, we were like zombies just shuffling everywhere we went, like, oh. And you just heard our feet go, shh, shh, shh. Good tired is now exhaustion. If you're wondering why we were so patient with Maddie, well, we need to consider our photo once again. Because you see, there's someone missing. One anxious morning, about a year before Maddie was born, Lee and I were surrounded by a frenzy of nervous doctors and nurses. Despite their best efforts, our daughter Elizabeth was born, 20 weeks prematurely. She only lived about three hours. Burying our daughter Elizabeth was one of the hardest, most challenging moments we've ever faced as a family. So now you understand why we were willing to endure 18 months of sleepless torture with Maddie, because we finally had our baby girl home. 
Every family has moments they'd rather not talk about or wish never happened. Life's not always perfect. It's not always unicorns and rainbows. But to paraphrase Viktor Frankl, a meaningful life is built upon viewing these challenging moments as painful as they may be, not as imperfections, but as the good stuff. So after 18 months, our nights went something like this. You get her. No, you get her. No, your turn, please. So one dark, sleepless night, Lee is slowly shuffling to go get Maddie, who we had long since moved to her room, okay? Now, unbeknownst to my wife, I had gone to make the baby bottle in the hopes, please, Jesus, that she would sleep through the night. My wife is back in the bed trying to calm Maddie down when she hears this strange noise coming from the kitchen. Shh, shh, shh. She looks up, peers through the moonlight, and sees this dark, shadowy figure slowly walking towards the bedroom, holding something in his hand. And she's so tired that her mind plays a trick on her and tells her, oh no, he's got a chainsaw. <laughs> but, it, but it wasn't a chainsaw, it was me coming back towards the bedroom holding the baby bottle, okay? Friends, when I got to the doorway of our bedroom, my wife screamed. And I don't mean one of these high-pitched horror movie screams, okay? She screamed like I've never heard before, okay? From her toenails came... <laughs> yeah. And her scream scared me so badly, and I was so tired and exhausted that the first thought in my mind was, oh, no, she got back in the bed with Maddie, tried to scoot Ethan over, only to realize that somehow, in our exhaustion, one of us must have rolled over onto him and smothered him to death. Yeah, thanks for laughing at my pain. <laughs> but it was in that moment, I screamed. Okay? I pulled that baby bottle in close. I squatted, looked towards the heavens, and offered this simple prayer. <laughs> it was in that moment that Ethan stood up and gave us his best Scooby-Doo. Just, uh -huh. Everyone, heck, even our neighbors are awake at this point. We spent the remainder of the night in the living room watching TV and developing a heartbreaking plan to get Maddie to sleep through the night. We would put her in her room and shut her door. We would go to our room and shut our door. Maddie would have to cry herself to sleep. The good news? After a few weeks of all-night cry sessions, Maddie and her family slept through the night for the first time in 18 months. Life is a series of moments. Good tired moments, challenging moments, and ridiculously silly moments like these with Maddie that are so bonkers they become part of the fabric or the DNA of your family. You know, those silly moments that, that we secretly laugh about and become the inside jokes that we tell to one another. Those moments, my friends, they are the good stuff. Every day is a gift full of opportunities to connect with those that matter most. So I hope over the last few moments you realize that your life, like mine, is full of simple, everyday moments that often go overlooked. Could it be that we've made connecting with our families more difficult than it has to be? Psychologists tell us that somewhere between 40 and 90 percent of us live with the regular woulda, coulda, shoulda moments of regret. What we're doing is not working. We all wish that, you know, life is digital, complex, and fast-paced, um, but if we want to build strong family connections, we must begin to embrace our everyday. Everyday moments like sending encouraging text messages to one another, singing your favorite family song on the way to the grocery store, or putting a smile on a stranger's face when you can tell they've had a really long day, or sharing a meal with close family and friends. You see, when we embrace every day, every day becomes meaningful. Sure, elaborate family activities are wonderful, but they'll crumble if not built upon a foundation of regular, intentional moments of connectivity. Too often we get so busy doing stuff for our family that we miss making memories with our family. Time flies. Or as my cousin John Paul says, the days are long, but the years are short. You see, if we don't embrace the everyday, all we'll be left with is one day. One day there'll be no more toys to pick up, no more birthday cakes with fingerprints in the icing, 
No more crayon artwork on the fridge. No more daily loads of laundry. No more Santa Claus tooth fairy, the Easter bunny. One day there will be no more sleepovers, no more giggles in the dark, no more band-aid kisses. One day there will be no more responsibility. You'll prepare the perfect meal on a tablecloth free of spaghetti stains and you'll eat it alone. One day you'll blink and a voice will remind you of those old familiar words. Why don't you kids grow up? And the silence will echo, we did. Embrace your everyday moments because the stuff you hate now will be the stuff you miss later. Thank you. <laughs>